We started this year very well. We take it time to study the word of God. Amen. This is our year of focus. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. We've been looking at the four pillars of focus. We look at the SSPT, you know, as a guide. We say the S is the self. Am I right? Second S is what? The story. And the P is what? The philosophy. And the T is what? The thing. Hallelujah. We said your story is your greatest. You know, your, you know yourself is 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 is, is who you are. Who you are. We, we must first know who we are as a people. We must, we must know who you are, even in Christ. Your story, your story is 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 is, is it's what makes you who you are. Is your is it, your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And you must be intentional in owning your story. You must be intentional in owning your story. Tell your story. Your philosophy, your values, your beliefs, uh, your, your behavior, what guides you, what guides you, what you know, enables you to do what you do. Hallelujah. What guides your actions. And um, we look at the team that, you know, that, 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 that you need the team. You need the team to make life work. A single tree cannot build a forest. And we'll get into all this. We are still, you know, last Sunday we started with the, st with the self. Hallelujah. We look at the five buckets of the self. Are we working with me in the, with the PowerPoint? Amen. We look at the five buckets of the self. And we said about the knowledge. You must know, you must know something. Tell somebody, know something. Don't be a non entity. Amen. You must know something this year. Hallelujah. You must know at least something. Know something. Okay. What you know, what you know, the five buckets we started with what you know, then your skills, your skills, what you can do, what you can do. So you must know something, what you know, what you can do, skills. And we said, who you know, your network, who you what? No. Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? Ask somebody again. Who do you know? Hallelujah. Who do you know? Are they answering you? They're answering you. If all you know is just me, <laughs> like, like some of you said yesterday, last, last Sunday, that pastor will know you. If all you know is just me, <laughs> you may be limited. You must know God. Amen? Which is the most important thing. But besides God, you must know somebody else. Amen. You know, um, uh, our son you know, was in school. Was it Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, went to school on Wednesday. And um, I got a shout from him Daddy, can you bring this form? You know, and he knows that I will not do it. You go, he forgot something, you, you, you take it the next day. Don't, don't, I'm not an errand era boy. Amen. But I can see the communication coming. I need this come by 1.25 p.m. because I need to be back to class by 1.40. So you must, be, you must be at the gate by 1.45. I'm looking at all this message. What's, what's all this for? What's all this for? And I know that there's, he can't talk to me like that. He may have gotten permission from his mother. You know? He may have gotten permission from his mother. So, but somehow I agreed to go, you know? I agreed to go. And uh, by 
125. I was there. Amen. Amen. And then gave him what he wanted. And uh, I came back and I asked. I asked Pastor Andrea, the mother, why was this communication? Why was this? And it was, you no, know, the letter he forgot was he was selected to go to Oxford for something. Amen. Amongst some few students, he was selected to be in Oxford in, by next month, Oxford University. So she knows that I would love. <laughs> she knows that <laughs> your dad will, wherever you are, you forget that letter, he will take it. <laughs> he will take it an opportunity to be in Oxford. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And I said, You guys got me. Whether you forget or not, I will take it. You will go to Oxford. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, who do you know? Who do you know? And at some point, you know, those do you know, you know? There are some people you should know for something else. Amen. Hallelujah. We say your network is your net worth. Amen. Okay. And what next? What did we say after that? Your resources. Your resources. Your resources. What you have. Time is a resource. Money is a resource. Amen? Uh -huh. So, yeah, you, must, you must value time, invest time. You must have money. You must make money. Amen? You must what? Make money so that you don't uh, become a nuisance in life. Amen? When your family is meeting, they must, they must count you among those that can provide something. Am I right? And they are meeting the most. Sometimes they don't even need to know. You just send them something. Amen. Oh, we thought that we should not bother you about this. That should be the attitude. Don't run away from your responsibilities. My dad used to use the word phrase. Don't shake your responsibilities. S H I R K. You must. If you are a man, you are a man. You are a woman. You are in, in a family life. You must be part of everything that goes on in that family. Am I right? Amen. So you must have some resources. And then we talk about your reputation. Amen. What are, what are people saying about you? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I won't bother you all that again. This morning, we are looking at still on the self now. Discovering yourself. You must know yourself. Amen. Okay. We must what? know ourselves and quickly let's go slide two three slides and we are done um knowing yourself revelations 3 verse 15 to 16 says i know your works that you are neither what neither cold neither cold nor hot i could wish you were cold or hot verse 16 verse 16 of that revelation 3 so then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Out of my mouth. Let's pray, Father. Once again, we commit your word. The time we have unto you, we ask for grace. We ask for your for, for understanding of your word. We ask that your this word will transform us, heal us, deliver us from all forms of bondage. We're praying that this word will set us to make this year a year of you know great exploits. You're a focus indeed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the scripture by the side, Psalm 90, verse 12. You can bring that up now. Psalm 90, verse 12. Simply it says, So teach us to number our days so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. So teach us to number our days that we may gain the heart of wisdom. Apply our hearts to wisdom. Hallelujah. And that would be our guiding scriptures. Now move quickly to the next slides. You know, the slide that we, you saw there. Not before this one. God bless you. Amen. Now, we, knowing yourself, we've tried to identify, uh, and you can get these several formats across. You, most of you have listened to messages on vision, on purpose, on identity, you know, and all that. You can get this anywhere basic principles. You must, number one, know, you know, 
in no particular order. You must know where you know you must know, know where you are coming from. You must know where you are coming from. First thing you must know about yourself is who am I? Who am I? Who am I is the, the is the question of identity. Who am I? So you must ask yourself this day. Ask yourself now, who am I? So you've got to answer that question. I'm looking at the seven basic fundamental questions of life. That's my focus today. About yourself. Seven what? Basic questions of life. Or seven fundamental questions of life. So the first question you must ask yourself as we begin this year is number one, who am I? Or the question of identity. Who am I? And we must, for, for many people, we live through life and we don't know who we are. You must know, you must answer this question on time in life. And if not answered before this year, this January, today, before this day runs out, you must answer it. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Hallelujah. The, who are you? If I'm asking you, who are you? For Jesus, he knew who he was. For the Lord Jesus, he knew who what? He was. You can have that in Isaiah 53. You know, it's three, four, five, you know. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Simple. He said, I am the way. He knew who he was. I am the way. I am the truth. There's no other truths. You can't falsify the truth. Yes, in Karl Popper, if you read philosophy, you talk about the Talk about the falsification of truth, that nothing is real truth. You can falsify truth. You, the truth that you know can be questioned. So, what Jesus is said, I am the way, I am what? The truth, I am the life. Hallelujah. And you too must answer that question. Who are you? Who are you? For John the Baptist, John 1 verse 19 to 23, John 1 verse 19 to 23, for John the Baptist, he said, I am a voice in the wilderness. The voice, I'm not the Christ that you are looking for. For, some, for, for many of us, we want to take somebody else's identity. Amen. We want to sound like somebody else. We want to do things like somebody else. You just want to we want to paint our face like somebody else. We want to dress like somebody else. All our life is about copying. Who are you? Ask somebody again, who are you? For John the Baptist, he said, I am the voice. And John 1 verse 19. Now, this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Verse 20, he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. That's 22. Then they said to him, who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? You must ask yourself, who am I? Now, the 23, he said, he said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. He knew who he was. He knew, he knew, he knew, he knew himself. Make straight the way of the for make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Hallelujah. So the question you must ask yourself, number one question is about yourself, is who am I? Who am, I, who am I? Hallelujah. For some, it may take you years to answer that question, but you must answer it today. Don't take it any, don't let it linger. Hallelujah. 
So who are you? We talk about Jesus. We talk about Johnny. Who are you as a person? You should be a child of God. Amen. You are a child of God. And be confident. Let nobody bring you down. In good days or in bad days, you make mistakes or not. Just know that you are a child of God. Hallelujah. You are a child of the living God. You are a child of God. John 1 verse 11 to 12. John 1 verse 11 to 12. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he, he gave the rights, the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Sons of God, some version we say. You are a child of God. Say, I'm a child of God. So you must be confident that you are a child of the living God. Wherever you are, wherever they want to box you. I was in Austria years ago and we were coming from my university, touch lining to Vienna for a trip. And we are in, in this coach as students and I was reading those small Bibles those days, those blue blue cover small Bibles. And I was just reading and reading and reading. Then a colleague from Pakistan was sitting next to me and he said, who are you? Because he, he seems engrossed all through this journey from touch lining to Vienna and this was 2001. So who are you? I said, I'm a Christian, child of God. He said, but you have other colleagues. I had about two, three other Nigerians in, the, in, in my cohort. About three, four. And some other believers. But they are not doing what you are doing. You seem so engrossed with the word of God. I don't know about others, but for me, I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. You are a child of God. And don't let anybody, don't, don't be so much you know, in the world that you cannot be separated from the world. When people see you, they must be, you must be distinct, you must be unique. Your boss will see you and say, this one is special. Amen. They must see you to be special, genuine in what you confess, what you believe in. Not like every other person. Hallelujah. So I'm asking again, who are you? Who are you? It's one question that you must answer. You must answer that question. Number two, number two, number two question is where am I from? That's the question of source. Your roots. I was thinking, I was preparing. If I ask in my family, we would say, John, where are you from? He would say, I'm an American. And that's what he would, in his class or whatever. Would say, so where are you from? They may call his four or five names. Where are you from? I'm an American. Where, ah, why? I was born in America. Amen. I've got an American passport. I've got a British passport. I'm thinking of how to give him a Nigerian passport. Amen. Your source, your source, your roots. Where are you? You must know where you are from. Where am I from? Sometimes when you behave, they will ask you, where are you from? Because you don't seem to behave like where you seem to have come from. You, amen. Either positively or negatively. Somebody may ask you, where, yeah, where are you from? Amen. Because what if you are from a particular family, a particular village, you can't be dressed naked. Amen. Am I right? I'm just using a so ladies, uh, you are all beautiful, looking very beautiful. Amen. Amen. But where are you from? You must, you must, you must be an ambassador of where you are from. Hallelujah. So that's the number two question you must ask her. Where are you from? Genesis 2, for you and I, we should be. We are, we, are, we are from God. We are created by God. We are created in the image of God. Am I right? You are not from a monkey. Your great-grandfather is not a chimpanzee. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Genesis 2, 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the head and breathed into his nostrils and the, the breath of life and man became a living being. I am from God. Amen. I am from God. I am a little God. A God with small g. My father is God. Jesus said, you know, he's God. And they begin to mock at mocking man. And he said, but why are you stoning me? Is it because of, yeah, I'm a child of God. And he said, ye are gods too. All of you are children of the most high God. Am I right? Hallelujah. You are a God. The likes of Moses were seen as God. Paul was seen as a God because of the manifestations. Hallelujah. And you must manifest as a God. Dominion. In power. So, where am I from? That's the question of your source, your roots. For Jesus, he said, I am from my father. John 14, John 14, 1 to 2. John 14, 1 to 2. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. My father's house, I'm from God. There are many mansions. That's where I'm from and that's where I will go back to. I will go there to prepare a place for you. So, where are you from? You may ask yourself that question. Where are you from? Where am I from? Number three, question quickly as we run through. Where are you going to? For many, they don't know where, you, where they are going to in life. Am I right? Today is Bradford. The next minute, it is Leeds. The next minute, it is Manchester. They are back to Bradford. Or like, like some of us, we came to Bradford. The next minute, we went to Miami, Florida, USA. The next minute, we are what? Back to Bradford. Now we've known where we are going to. Amen. And the earlier you know where you are going, the better. Why jump in all over the whole place? And when I know that Bravo is my place. But Moses, he ran. God said, go back. Go back, go back. Don't run, don't be. You are running. Go back and get my people out. Amen. Oh, how can, can I go? Will your presence go with me? I will go with you. Go. Hallelujah. Where are you going? In Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Jeremiah 1 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That, the, where you are going is the question of your destination, your destiny. You have a destiny. A destiny. Your destination. Are you going to London? Where are you going? You know, you know, sometimes you drive and you don't know where you're going. You just drive around. Let your world ride. Am I right? And somebody stops you. Where are you going? I'm just having a ride. Amen. But for life, you can't just have a pleasure riding on life. At every point in time, you must know where you are going. Destiny. Hallelujah. If I formed you, God has a purpose, a destiny for you. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 to 7. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 to 7. The verse 7 says, Then the dust will re return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. You are going to heaven or hell. Your destiny or hell. Where will you want to end? Your destination. You had a going, you are not going to end in hell. Are you, are you going to end in what? Heaven. And you must be prepared to decide where you are going. Your destiny. Your end. Your destination. 
heaven or hell? So you must answer the question of your destiny. I don't know how long you've lived. But if you've not answered that question, you, must, you can answer it today. Your destiny. How, where would my life end? You played around last year and you are still playing around this year. No. Simple. You won't end well. Amen. You keep playing around. You are jeopardizing your destiny. You are you end in hell. Life will be disastrous. Last year you took about 50 bottles of lager. This year you are going to take about 100 bottles. It will cost you so many things. Amen. Last year you slept with about 10 ladies. This year you want to sleep with what? 20. Or last year you slept with five different men. This year you want to make some greater mark. No, it won't end well. It won't end well. You must decide. You must decide. You must what? Decide your destiny. Your destiny. Number four. Where? Why am I here? That's, I would have loved to deal with this, but time will not permit us more. I will just summarize. That's the question of purpose. Why am I here? Why am I on this earth? The question of your purpose. I said when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is what? Minds me wrong. Amen? So you must answer the question of why you are here on earth. Why did God allow you to see 2024? Many came into 2023 but they never saw 2024. In short, while we're talking, you know, during the week, Pastor Andreas, a news came. A news came, man. We lost one of our Nigerian sisters on the first day of the year 2024. In Bradford. Student that just graduated. Am I right? But I wrote to me, can I don't know where somebody sent me the news from, from across, even, even across nations. Yeah, you know, you know from, from, from Leeds, yeah, yeah my, my friend from Leeds, then others started sending me from across nations. That is the life that we live in, first day of the new year. Brilliant student that just finished. Living husband and we pray for that the Lord will console them. And them strength. Why am I? That's why we must take every day, every minute serious. Why am I here? That is the question of purpose. Why was I born? Why was I born? You may ask. Hebrews 10, 7. Hebrews 10, 7. Then he said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will, O oh God. But Jesus is to do the will of God. He came so that the will of God, so that he knew why he was born, so that at, even at the cross he said, Lord, let thy will be done. That's what you brought me for. So from beginning he knew why he was born, why he was coming, why he came. So at the end, he didn't change his words. He said, let thy will be done. For many of us, when we are in that Crossroads, many we've seen many believers denying Jesus. Denying Jesus. You know, every time you sin, you are denying Jesus. When you had the choice of to choose right and wrong, and you go wrong because the wrong was you think that wrong will give you temporary freedom or temporary pleasure. You are denying Jesus. But Jesus, he said, I am here to do the will of the one who sent me. Now someone said, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why you were born. Amen. 
not the day you get married. Some they will know and they will not get married again. The nuns, like Paul, we said, no, that would be a disturbance. I know why. For me to live is Christ, to die is what? It's gain. The day he knew that his life is for Christ, forget about marriage. That would be a real disturbance. That won't let me achieve what I've come to do. Amen. Hallelujah. You must know, you must know the, the day you were born, one important day. The second day is what? The day you come to know why you were born. Many of us, we don't know why we were born. And that's why we're still living life the way we want to live our life. Hallelujah. Why am I here? The question of purpose. Now, it is said that, it is said that the, the people who have found their purpose for their lives, they are less prone to diseases. Amen. Doctors and Harvard business review that I read. Doctors found out that the people who found their purpose in life, they are more, they are more immune to, to diseases. That means they cannot be easily be sick because they know what to do with their life. Amen. They know what to do with their lives. Therefore, sicknesses is not part of not part of it. They keep on going. You will know your purpose. And sickness will be far from you. In the name of Jesus. And I can go on purpose for long. But let me run though. If I have time, I will come back to purpose. John where are we now? Purpose. Revelation 4 verse 11, quickly, on number 4. Revelation 4 11. Writing, it says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. And your will, they exist and created. You created everything for a purpose. You were created for a purpose. Number 5. So if you have a purpose, then what can you become? That's the next question you must ask that. So if God created me for a purpose, then what can I become? That's the question of potential. What do I have? What can I become? Can I be like Mazuga Belk or can I be uh, like, like uh, the original? Amen. <laughs> Not like Mark. Can I make a, a Mark? Can I make an impact in my own world, in my, in my own world? Can I, can, I, can I be someone, an, a kingdom influencer as the Lord gave to us the word, the crossover? Number five, what can I become? The seed of God in you, what can that, what can be the fruit? of what God has deposited in you. Since you have the potential, you have the breath of God, what can I become? And you can be anything. Because God, because you have the potential. In Daniel, he said, those that know they are God, they shall be strong and do exploits, great exploits. Because there's a seed in each and every one of us. Amen? You can become something. You can become that great man and woman of God can become that great inventor. You can become something in your own sphere of influence. That, that scientist, medical field or which field you are in. The next prime minister, you can become that. Say, I can become. Woo! Hallelujah. You can become. What can I become? That's the question. And I believe you can answer that question sincerely today. What can I become? I still want to see myself. I was telling Pastor Andrea, oh, I think it's time now. You no, know, as the church, we want to have our own university. Amen. And I, I had some opportunities to have to have even moved to a thousand seater I mean, kind of facility in Bradford. 
and just that I was thinking and what am I going to do with this building and before I knew it I could think of now the numbers came in their numbers I said if I had gotten that building in 2018 Amen if I had gotten that building in 2018 I would have been able to have this place I've got the offices and everything with all these professors all over the place all of you Amen all of you you man one department, another one man another department. They show these deans, faculties. You not be begging. I'm looking for serious. Hey Amen. I mean, you don't know what thing pains us. We can see what be that. Hey Amen. I'm looking at the, the people here and get to pay this one off, and you want to go to move to a thousand seat auditorium with all the things that are ready, ready. You can have the university, take off. You can have this Bible college, whatever name you want to call it. And Amen. We can, still, we can still do it. Hallelujah. We can still do it. We can still do it. Um, I don't know about this year because this year I'm taking time because so that we can be so vexed in our spirits so that we can go forth and possess all that is available. Enough of all the begging, begging, begging when you can create the jobs you are begging for, you can create the jobs. So what can I become? What can I, what? Is that where I am? What can I become? Number five, John 14 verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, John 14 12, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than this he will do because I go to my father. Hallelujah. Now you can raise the dead. You can cause the blind to see. Because greater works than this he said we can do. Amen. We're analyzing, we're analyzing the FOP, FOP in Manchester on Thursday. We're just analyzing as a family. Most times we go. And we said, see, the pastor, he blanked out all the American, all the American gospel artists. He brought the boys from, from where he came from. Amen. And filled the auditorium within two weeks. The tickets are off. Hallelujah. We said, there's only one group that can fill the stadiums in, in, in the UK. He brought all, so he didn't bother about all the American, uh, give you 50,000 pounds to. Yes, that's what they do. Fifty thousand pounds, fifty thousand dollars. First class tickets, five star hotels. They brought home from Atalabasis were there, dozens were there, Mr. Shimon were there, well Labi they were there. Who again came? Tinash. Field Field and on a Thursday, not on a Friday, on a Thursday weekday what you can become. And we're going to go into Bradford Life. You don't know what is Bradford Life, all of you. Bradford Life is the new biggest stadium in Bradford. Now, amen? What we can use? We'll go there this year. In the name of Jesus. Who will go? Who will go? Nothing will happen. We went to the stadium. We are going, we've, been, we've been going to the stadium for seven years now. Amen? We've been going to the what? To the stadium for seven years. We will go to Bradford Life. We will ask how much is this? And we will pay. Amen. We will pay. Let me round up now. Number what? Number six. Now, 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 I got this from my general Vasia. You know, I said, Ah, have you traveled? Now, if you can become, now, how far have you traveled in this journey? Because we all have a lifespan. So teach us the number of days so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. Psalm 90, verse 12. Now, how many years do you have left? Don't say I can become and you already what? At your age, most of you are already getting tired. Amen? Just one master, you are tired. Am I right? Be sincere to yourself. You are tired. You can't face another one year of serious study. You cannot. You cannot. Amen? Even for PhD, he said, Pastor, no way. 
you won't get tired. So you must know, the question is, you must know how far you have gone now. How far what? How far have I traveled? Your, that's the question of your location. So where am I? So if I'm going from Bradford to London, I should know where I am in the journey, whether I'm still in Leeds. If I'm still in Leeds, that means journey is still far. Amen? But if I've gotten to like Milton Keynes, then I'm close to my destination. In that case, I can afford to at least have some time to relax more. But if you are far, as a church, we started very fast. Because know how we we're going. And I learned that from Ajima Basia. He said, wear your pillow early in life. Wear, yeah, that means, that means, that means, wear it out. Let your pillow flatten early in life. That means, walk your life, walk in a way that you don't have a tomorrow, that you have just one day left. So whatever we're doing, we're doing it with all our life. Everything. To buy the building, we must buy the building fast. We are praying, we are praying 24-7. We are, we are here every morning of the day. We are praying, we are walking the city. Whatever we are doing, we are doing. I was telling them in the prayers this week, this week that there was a time that we had a conference and we started the conference 6 a.m., not in some countries, yeah. And the hall was filled 6 a.m. with people. An annual conference. We, the first session was 6 a.m. Guest speaker came 6 a.m. We're here at 6 a.m. You think it's only no. Now 7 p.m. Most of you are still sleeping at home. Amen. We were yes, people came, we finished it. Two hours, people go to work. Come for the evening session later. Amen. Okay, quickly, let me round up. Where am I now? Your location. Your what? How far have I traveled? Where am I from A to Z? Joshua 13 verse 1. Joshua 13 verse 1. Now Joshua was old, advanced in age, advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, you are old, advanced in years. And there remains very much land yet to be possessed. For Joshua, God was telling him, hey, you have failed. Because you are whole, you cannot win all these battles again. You don't have strength again. And, we, and most of us you know, consider Joshua to be an hero, isn't it? But for God, God said, no, you are, you are old. You are advanced in age. And the Lord said to him, you are whole, advanced in years, and there remains very much land to be possessed. How many houses have you built? When you can build, when God expects of you to have a city, and you've just bought two, three houses, and you are already old. Amen. He said, there's so much, so much for us to take over. So much. Schools. To build kingdom schools, and we are already getting tired, already old. Hallelujah! So, what have you done with your years on earth? That is the most important thing. What have you done for Stephen? For Stephen, look at what God said for Stephen, Acts 8, Acts 6, verse 8, Acts 6, verse 8. Stephen died young, but he achieved so much. Acts, Acts 6 verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. You will do great wonders and signs, miracles in Jesus' name. Last point quickly, last point. How much time have I left? Because that's the question of time. For a student that is studying and it's time for the examination, if it's, if it's February and it comes to last week of January, he will know that he doesn't have time. So the way he will behave is different from when he, it was in October. When it's January and you have to have your things in, your, your exam assignments in, 
it'll be mid-January and this is first week of January is gone. You will be G3. Am I right? Because you don't have time left. So the way you behave, that's why some people, some of, some of, some of you, I don't know what I, I, I never did this. I heard that some people, they put their legs, the feet on water, bucket. Come on. So that they'll be awake. They cannot afford to sleep. Am I right? Look to me. You did it, eh? Amen. Because there's no time again. There's no time, what? So in life too, you must approach life that way. How much time do you have? How much time do I have left? I don't know what your target is. That for us, we, we put all our targets. At this, I will do this. I will do this. I will do that. I will do that. I, I was thinking. I was thinking. I've got an MPA. I've got an MSc. I've got an LLM. I've got a PhD. I was thinking. I was thinking. And I was thinking. I got an MBA. I was thinking, no, I was thinking, and I see I have some things left. Yes, I see I have some things left, and anytime I tell Pastor Andrea, Pastor Andrea, I say you are on your own. <laughs> Amen. I know that I have some things left. I have not know that's not all about what I want. I see I have some things left. The more I want to do, the more I have to do other things. Time, the time. How much time do you have left? Luke, 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 Luke 13, verse 31 to 31. This may interest you. But Jesus, they asked him, how much time? Luke, give me the scriptures that we can read together. Luke, Luke 13, 31 to 33. But that's, they asked Jesus about the question of time. Luke 13, 31. Are you working with me? Okay. On that very day, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get out and depart from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Look at the asking Jesus, telling Jesus that they want Herod wants to kill you. Now look at what his response 32 quickly. And he said to them, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out what? I cast out demons and perform cures. Today, today I have work to do. I have work to do. I know what I'm doing today. I cast out demons and perform cures today. And tomorrow, I have work to do today and tomorrow. Amen? Then, and the third day I shall be perfected. I'm not dying. I still have three days. That error cannot kill me now. I have, I have things doing. I'm casting out demons. I'm healing people. Then the next, by the third day, I will perfect everything I've done. Before it can do anything, it can't be today, it can't be tomorrow. After the third day, before he can do anything, I, I still have three days left. The time, question of time. Question of time. James, quickly, James 4, verse 13 to 14. Let's round up this. James 4, 13 to 14. It says, James 4, 13 to 14. Come now and you will say, Today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, speed, spend a year there, buy and sell, make profit. Whereas we do not know what will happen, what? Tomorrow. But what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. You don't know the time. For you, you don't know the time. Jesus knew the time. For you and I, we don't know the time. And that's why you must, whatever you have to do, do it right now. Ephesians, Paul now said, Paul now said, Ephesians 5, 15 to 16. He said what? Redeem the time. You may have lost some good time. Therefore what? Redeem Work circumspectively, work with wisdom. That means whatever, that means you can do things, things you will have done for, for three months, do it in a week. Amen? Things, things, things you should have naturally been doing for three months or six months, you now redeem the time because you have lost so much time. You do it what? In one week, two weeks, you've done it. Go into some other things. That means you walk ahead of time. Because you've already lost so much 
of time. Let's rise up. Clap, clap for Jesus.